Welcome to the Suerte del Molino farm, Andalusia in Spain. Here we are in nature. We are changing seasons. Everything is producing their uh, reproductive seeds, all the plants. We have hay fever and uh, we are out of our rainy season so we have to think differently and behave differently just see the difference between the green colors of the trees in front of us the middle one is a cork and the leaves are much brighter greener beautiful let's talk about irrigation we are busy installing an irrigation system and it's quite tricky but uh, we start somewhere and then we see what we have and build on it here we have a 10,000 liter water tank, highest part of the land, and then a flange with a 40 millimeter pipe leaving it. And this is our starting point. So, which type of pipe to get? We have the 40 millimeters, so we carry on with it. From the water tank that feeds the water to the garden only with gravity, we also have an electrical pump, solar energy, that pumps from the cistern and then distributes the water east and west through a 40 millimeter pipe, although the pump has a uh, the area where the water leaves is only 32 millimeters so I made it bigger why I just wanted an uniform main supply line is that serious I hope it will make an improvement in the water flow but uh, in this area it appears that 32 millimeters is more or less the average and most people use it this is the borehole 100 meters deep that pumps the water up to the tank and um, it's amazing the areas in the shade the grass is still soft <coughs> and growing and the areas in the sun is already turning brown that is the importance so if I want to think of irrigation simultaneously I have to think of shade trees mulch the occasional creek occasional flowing creek ran out of occasions some moist spots here and there but it's dry so we have this main 40 millimeter supply line it runs behind that top tree over there and it comes down and then I have drip lines from where the drippers are installed, the emitters. Some simple facts. I wondered how to close the ends. It's just this plastic thingamajig, two holes, and it doubles the folds the pipe and no water leaves here 
Then we install this drip line. It's a uh, 200 meters long, this one. We pulled it three times all directions to just because I was stupid just to get the best way to enter this berm around the trees, through the trees and then to be able to mulch it and then we placed the drippers on top of it so first we clear the middle of the berm then we put down the drip line then we mulched it and then we installed the emitters emitters was another process because in our area there's a lot of calcium in the water and also a lot of dust summer lots of mulch on top so I extended each emitter by 20 centimeter uh, 3 millimeter polyethylene pipe called spaghetti and I hope it will make my life easier talking about emitters uh, basically I could choose between three types <clears throat> one that screws open and close and regulate the flow and one that um, is in such a way it has a labyrinth inside that is a special way of letting the water flow and I can open it and clean it and then there's another type where you uh, it adjusts, adjusts the pressure so that the same amount of liquid leaves all the time but you cannot open it and you cannot clean it so I have opted for the middle one the special one with this labyrinth flow in it and then I could put a uh, spaghetti on top of it and I can open it and I can clean it this is what it used to look like and then I cut my way through here with a wheat eater so that it's much easier to work it's actually uh, quite problematic working on a berm uh, on the legs on the back because you're always at an angle and uh, in our swales they're always filled with organic material especially branches so I cannot work from the other side and uh, so it's difficult then the drip line here we have a lot of asparagus and the seeds and uh, we just sprouted our first asparagus from last year's seeds what an excitement uh, they grow so well that uh, I feel I'm going to cover the whole farm in asparagus that will be great so this is the 40 millimeter pipe that comes from the cistern from the pump then with the collar I can tap into it I first put a collar on drill a hole and then uh, attach the pipe and then here I have a valve uh, it's easy to turn over I just need two hands for that it's moving quite a lot now in summer but uh, we will get there so I have two drip lines 
one all along the fence and one on all the fruit trees. The same thing happens here. And then to cap this off, I had to reduce it to 32 millimeters because they don't sell these caps in 40 milli millimeters. And it's also okay now I can attach a pipe if I want to water something else sometime. That's actually quite neat. This is the Hohube, uh, Chinese date. A lot of thorns growing beautifully here. Lots of asparagus. And then I have a few willows in here and also pumpkins and melons on the berms as a ground cover. There is a carob and then also there's an olive and there are also no, I can't see it. Our meth. And then obviously our Paulovnias. Our tiny uh, home oak. Looks like a bird. This is Sunday afternoon. We promised ourselves to take a break. Our hands are actually swollen from doing all this fine work and especially with the emitters and the spaghetti and things like that. Uh, so, good time to go slow. Tomorrow morning I will switch on this irrigation system for the first time from the pump before we had it from the uh, water tank and uh, I will first wash it out the end of this 40 millimeter pipe then I will put the uh, tap uh, the block at the end and then uh, I'll open these uh, drip lines so that uh, they can wash out whatever is in there and then I will close the end of the drip lines and hopefully the drippers will do its thing it will drip here we have some lemongrass a fig a moringa a, an olive fig some pumpkins home oak and a fig our meth another our meth fig fig apple a few moringas And a few nothing where the uh, deer ate the apple trees. Many figs, gooseberry, and then at the end of the line where I will wash it out tomorrow, first thing in the morning, and I will shout. I will jump with joy and shout with delight when it works. In my mind I have scenarios where this whole thing explodes because the pressure is too high or there's not a single drop because the pressure is too low. But I can take it. So with the irrigation system, don't worry trial and error. Once the water comes out I will put a container underneath 
an emitter and measure in a few places how much water does come out in which time period. In the case of the water tank, when it's full, it the emitters emit more because there's more pressure. And in this electric pump, I think it will be more regulated. I hope so.